Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. I hope you are well. So today I'm going to be talking about and sharing some tips around starting locks. Now if you're looking to start locks or if even if you have no interest in starting locks at all but you're interested in the process then this video is for you and I'm going to basically go through a few tips that I think will be quite worthwhile if you're starting out locks or things start locks and if you're ready for locks. So you know, let's get right into it. So first of all, one of my main questions that I would ask you or ask yourself is what type of person are you? And when I say that, I mean, are you the type of person that gets bored easily, that, um, you know, slightly indecisive maybe perhaps, um, and impatient? Now, if you're any of these things, then I'm not saying that you shouldn't get locks, but you should really think very carefully about um, getting locks because it is quite a commitment to make um, and it's quite a process as well that you have to kind of stick out and if you're the type of person that again gets bored easily and indecisive then you're going to really struggle especially in the first um, few months or few weeks of getting locks before it makes that um, sort of transformation and locks so you really need to think about that before you get locks also another thing in terms of the type of person you are do you like to do your hair yourself or, um, uh, you know, are you quite creative if you're here, you're quite full on or hands on, or do you like to just leave things be? You know, with locks, you can, to a certain degree, leave things be, but at the same time, it does take some sort, some type of maintenance as well. And the maintenance can be quite costly, especially if you don't do your locks yourself and you go to a loctician um, and prices can vary on that. So you need to think about those sort of things as well. Um, and really, I would say, do your research on that in terms of the maintenance side of things. Now also, if you're the type of person that likes to switch up your look, then, yes, okay, locks can definitely be versatile. You know, I've done a couple of videos on different styles that you can do with locks, but if you like to wear weaves and things like that, if you like to dye your hair blonde and then red and then all types of things like that, yes, you can do that, but to a certain degree, especially when you're starting out locks. I can't emphasize enough the first stage of starting locks and how much resilience you need and how much patience you need to really see it form um, and things like that. And I'll get more into that as well because you know there are different options out there for you. Next thing to think about is to choose your style of locks. Now there are so many different ranges. Um, the top ones that I'll go through are sister locks which are really tiny micro locks, like really, really thin, really slim locks that you can do. Traditional locks, which I suppose I have, which is, you know, it's a sort of medium, you know, length, uh, not length, but medium thickness. Um, and then there's free form, which you basically leave your hair to just do what it wants and to form the way it wants to. Next, I would say is to stick to, if you can, one method of retwisting your locks. Um, and so there are two from the top of my head that I can think of. I'm sure there are many more out there, but the two that I'll focus on are um, sort of palm roll and there's also interlocking as well, which you'll need a crochet, crochet needle um, to sort of interlock the root of your hair. Now I say stick to one form of, or one method, simply because if you're starting out, for example, palm rolling and then you switch it up to interlocking or vice versa, then as your hair starts to grow, you'll start to notice that some points, some points are quite weak and probably has holes in them as well. And that's because, you know, when you're switching off a method, it kind of forms in a different way and it can sort of manipulate the way that your locks will be. So try and stick to one form if possible. Most people don't really like interlocking um, and some people do kind of thing. Now another thing to consider when you're starting out locks, like literally just be before you do your locks, and this is something that I was not aware of and was not told of certainly this I had my I've had my locks for about 12 years now and I was not aware of this but it's something called a grid pattern now my hair um it, it's when it, when it says grid pattern it's just the parting basically of your locks now mine are just probably just a standard square box um lock um well grid pattern should I say and some people can, you, if you want to, you can make it into a diamond. So you can part your hair into diamond blocks and also um, squares or triangles and things like that. And this is simply, if you have your hair up in a style, then it will make a nice formation or a nice formed pattern 
in your hair it just adds to it it's just it's just aesthetics really to be honest with you it's not a need or must but it's something to think about um and yeah and if i'd known that i probably would have gone for something cool and funky like that but then you have to remember that if you're retwisting your hair as time goes on especially if you go to a loctician um then make sure that they follow that same grid pattern otherwise it will get lost basically when different strands of hair goes into different places and again, find a loctician that can go through this with you. Um, again, as I said, I certainly didn't know anything about this, but at least these are questions you can start thinking about because I wasn't even aware to think about these types of questions. But find someone that can go through that with you, can answer your questions and things like that. I'll go, I'll do another video, a separate video on finding a loctician because that in itself has a whole heap of information that would be quite useful for you. So I'll do another video on that, on finding the right loctician because I have had many locticians in my life. Um, and yeah, I would like to share that with you. Now I'll go into the stages. Now, I would narrow this down into four stages that your locks go through when you're starting locks. There are probably five, there are probably more, I don't know, but I'm gonna to stick to four. I'm gonna narrow it down into four different stages that your locks form into as they gradually get to the mature stage. So the first stage is starter locks. So those are the newly formed um, coiled locks that don't basically look like locks. It can look like twists and again some people start off their locks by just twisting their hair with two strands. Some people use a comb. Um, so I'm just more talking about the comb method of um, twisting locks and so that will be a coil method, um, coil form. So this, is ba this stage is basically the pre-lock stage and where it's just finding its way, where it's just starting to form and um, that is the first few months so about three to six months it will be in this stage for again this all depends on your hair type your hair texture if you have soft hair it may take longer um, if you have coarser hair it may be able to um, mat or um, join together quickly who knows you know it's just all dependent on different hair types but I'll say it will be between three to six months that this stage of your locks will be in and then the second stage is the baby lock stage where it starts to bud and it sounds so lovely but basically your hair will start to form some thickness um, it'll start to be I don't know puffy for lack of a better word and it'll start to frizz as well so it'll start to look a bit untidy in terms of the actual body of the locks will start to look a bit untidy um, as you can see mine right now aren't necessarily untidy but it'll be a bit more puffy a bit more frizzy especially at the ends as well and generally especially if you leave your locks because you are supposed to leave your locks to so just let them form your partings will not be as prominent basically and so this is now about the six to nine month stage and then the third stage is what they call the teenage stage now many have said that this stage is quite the difficult stage because it's not quite long enough yet but you know it's still forming kind of thing so it's at that kind of awkward stage maybe that's why they call it teenager stage because you know as a teenager you start to feel awkward you're not quite an adult yet you know i digress but the locks are now much thicker and they are fully budded and they have definitely increased in thickness basically and then the final stage the adult stage um or the mature stage basically is where you want and where you've been waiting for your locks to reach so your locks have finally reached a point where they're more defined and noticeable in length and less frizz so um yeah then you can just start to think oh i actually have locks i mean you obviously do have locks anyway but you know it's definitely more defined and you can just really start to enjoy your locks a lot more so guys i hope you enjoyed this video i wanted to keep it nice and short and sweet i'm going to do a few different series um of this topic of starting locks um the type of loctician to look for and i might even throw in there my lock journey in fact i will throw in there my lock journey because i want to share that with you guys as well but i wanted to keep this video nice and short and really concise just so that um it's something that you can take especially if you're starting locks and especially if you're looking to start locks just in terms of getting an idea of what the stage is like and I hope this really did help you and if it helps anybody that you know please do share this video with them also please do like this video if you did like it and also comment below I want to know if you, what stage you're at are you looking to start locks um, have you started locks and you're at that really difficult stage what is a difficult stage you're finding right now I would love to hear from you guys so please do leave a comment below 
below and also please do subscribe to my channel I'm fairly new to all of this and I have finally reached over 100 subscribers I'm not quite sure how long I'll say that for maybe until I reach my next milestone which hopefully pray to God will be like a thousand plus but until then you know I'm really happy with that and I'm thankful for all of you who have subscribed to my channel, who are watching my videos, who are liking, who are commenting. I'm really enjoying this and I'm glad you're enjoying it too. So please do subscribe to my channel and continue to join me on this journey. And I'll see you again in my next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.